Cue the twinkling lights and snowy nights. On today's special episode of Homeworthy, we're counting down the days to Christmas with a few of our favorite holiday design ideas. From festive party tricks in Texas to nutcracker themed decor in Virginia, these tastemakers will have you hoping you're on the nice list this year. Enjoy, but first, a big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's Homeworthy episode. Hi everyone, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and the holiday season can be an overwhelming time for many, myself included. And once January rolls around, the pressure to set goals for the new year can also feel heavy. Sometimes you might feel like talking to a therapist could be helpful, but making the first move can be hard. This is where BetterHelp comes in. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with your therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less. You'll be able to schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you via the phone, video, or chat. If you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com homeworthy. If the therapist you're first matched with doesn't feel like the right fit, which can be common when starting therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. Click the link in the description below or visit betterhelp.com homeworthy to get 10% off your first month so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hey, let's um, go show you the library. This is... Um one of my favorite rooms to decorate. I added a couple new things into it this year. Okay, here is one of my favorite rooms to decorate and definitely one of my favorite rooms to sit in um, after I finish decorating. It's my library. Um, I do the same thing year after year here and it's the easiest thing in the world to do. I like to really kind of string Christmas cards and I save those every year. You heard me talk about this last year with you guys. It's as simple as just kind of hanging twine and then putting Christmas cards over it. Now, I have tons of Christmas cards where right now they're not bifolds like this. I, you can hang those, but you're gonna have to tie them onto the line. I'm a little lazy about that, which is why you see kind of the bifolds hanging there. But I, I have to tell you this, last year, after we did the video together, and that was so much fun, I got so many nice letters and Christmas cards from people who saw the Homeworthy video and sent me Christmas cards to add to the list. So I've been collecting them and adding them to my little section here. I, this is one, and this is one, and this is one. I, I just love it that somebody took the time and energy to to write to me and let me know how much they enjoyed it and added their stuff. So it, it's it's been a treat. I keep them in a box. So I, I have every Christmas card I've ever received. And I, I will definitely put up some of my favorites here year after year after year, but I will also kind of change them out. So it's one of the fun things I like to do. I will take that box of Christmas cards out and kind of re-look through them and decide which ones I'm gonna hang up. Now, some of them I do, you know, I, I worked on Capitol Hill for a long time, as I told you guys about. So I have some old White House Christmas cards I used to get. I don't get them anymore, but I used to get them. And, and so I will kind of display some of those. And then ones of family, one of my best childhood friends. Uh, this is her daughter, Sarah Mack. Sarah Mack is graduating from college this year. So congratulations, Sarah Mack. But that's um, one of the, her, their Christmas cards that they send. So I will switch that up. And then some year I need to use the new ones where I'm going to just have to figure out how to hang them. I'll punch a hole in them and do it that way. The other thing that I've done in here is, as I said, I like to add scarves. So I thought, I had never done this before, but I thought, oh, you know, that horse <laughs> could really use a scarf as well. And I just love it. I can't believe I've never done it before. 
And then my other big new element in here is growing up, my mom had a German Christmas pyramid and I loved it as a kid. It sat on our coffee table in the living room and I would light it and watch it spin around. So I thought I need to buy one. At the end of the season last year, I bought this one from Newport Lamp and Shade and I love it so much. I have bought tons of extra candles so I can light it nonstop and just sit here and watch it spin around. The way when I do my Christmas party, I like to split it up. This is where I set up the bar. This, this room right here, and I, I mean, I can open it up to show you, but it, it's another room that I've turned into my closet and laundry room. Oh, the light's not on in it. But I will set up the bar here. I, I will move some of this furniture out and then they can stand here and make a bar and it, it just really helps with the flow of the house. I was touring a historic house in Maryland and I, I kind of want to do this. And they had taken a door like this and cut it in half to make it like a Dutch door. And then you would open up the top and flip over a shelf and that created its own bar. I'm blown away by that. So I kind of want to do the same thing with this door and make it a Dutch door so I can have a little handy bar set up there and I don't won't even need to bring in a table giving me more room. Oh, and I will show you this. Remember I was talking about my painting that, that I do, like an actual physical painting a room. This is the powder room that I got it in my mind to paint two weeks ago. So um, I wanted to zhuzh up the color. Let me turn the light on. And I'll get out of the way and let you see it. But I wanted, it was a white trim and I felt like it didn't really accentuate the paper enough. So I decided to go with the bold green and that was a pain in the butt. I'm tripping over furniture now. That was a pain in the butt to paint behind that little sink. Oh my gosh, but I did it without any, any messes. That sink, by the way, now some people don't judge me for doing this, but that is a really pretty piece of antique furniture. It, but it was just the perfect size and it's exactly what I wanted and what I needed. So I've turned it into a sink. I, I think some people will hate me for that, but I just love it. And I like to say I'm now giving this new life for that piece of furniture that will be there forever. So I don't save all my magazines. I'm not a hoarder and that thing, but I do save magazines that I love. And I was a huge Colonial Homes fan. I, I don't know if you remember that. So I have almost every issue of Colonial Homes. This one's from 1982, 1981. Colonial Homes started back in the 70s and, and went until the early 90s. So I have a very large percentage of those through the early 90s. And then I, I was featured in a couple magazines, so I very egotistically have those displayed here. But I was in Southern Living a few years back, so, uh, you know, I, I have it kind of... Oh, here we go. Now, you know what? I think this is funny. Don't hate me, Southern Living. They clearly did not like the color of my living room, and they changed it out. They put it in this orange color. My living room has never been orange, but that photo is a lie. <laughs> if you ever see this issue, my living room has never been that color, but it's pretty. All right, so here we are in my bedroom. Um, the biggest change that I have made in this room is with this Christmas tree. As you see, I have used colored lights for the first time in my life. Not that y'all care about what kind of lights I use, but for me, this is a huge change. I, I haven't had colored lights since a little bitty kid, but I did it a little differently. I layered it with all the white lights like I do downstairs and then overlaid that with a strand of colored lights. I found color lights are only three colors, blue, red, and green. I felt like that simplified it and made it less bold, um, and, but I, I love it. I think this is my new favorite tree. Other than taking a step back, 
there are huge holes in this tree because of whatever stupid crappy year this was for trees. So that dri is driving me insane. But other than the huge gaping holes, I love this tree so much. I also changed up a little bit from last year. I used to always do more of a themed tree here. I've run out of memories and the place downstairs, so in the tree downstairs, so I've had to recreate that up here. And I've started adding those same things to this tree. So it really kind of mimics what I'm doing downstairs, except this tree will be all of my more recent memories. The one downstairs really more from uh, times growing up and uh, time with my family. So I, I like that extension of it as well. And then the other thing I did differently is Normally I have a chair like this that sits here. I decided to move the chair completely to really bring the tree out into the room more and I, I really like that aspect of it. So I love lying in my bed and looking at a tree and, and, and during the winter months, I will kind of go to bed early but not fall asleep. So specifically so I can lie in bed and stare at this tree and look at it. But I will always turn them off at night. I'm very fire safety conscious. I had a house fire, gosh, tw 20 years ago now. And that's made me, uh, gave me PTSD about any future house fire. So I, by the way, that house fire was not Christmas tree related. I just wanna, I just wanna state that out. Technically it was my neighbor's house that caught on fire and that fire was so big it made my house catch on fire. So not my fault, but I, it made me very self-aware, self safety conscious, and um, I will not leave it on. I w if I'm going out during the day, I will turn them off. I will not leave them on. You can feel the heat off of all these lights at times. I almost feel like I don't even need to heat the house with it. Last year when you guys were here, um, I had just uh, wallpapered this room, and I had joked because I'm always changing things up that I was going to I was already going to redo it and that this year it would be a completely different look and you all had to come back so you can see it. As you can see, I have not changed this wallpaper, but what I have done, and that's because I, it's kind of, it's kind of, well, I liked it even when I put it up, but it's grown on me more. I've changed some elements about this room that really, I feel like tied it in together. I kind of changed um, the pillows that I have both on the bed, on the settee. I brought in some new furniture, like this great um, William and Mary high boy that I have here. And then I changed some of the artwork around. And to me, that ties the room together so much that I'm kind of digging this wallpaper and I, I think I'm gonna live with it for a while. Although, <laughs> I am doing a little bit of work next year on the house, some more renovation work. And one of my ideas is to panel this entire bedroom because I love a paneled room so bad and I want a paneled room. If I don't panel here, I'm gonna panel the dining room. So one of those rooms will be paneled, but maybe it will still change. The other thing, I used to have this nativity set in the dining room and I've moved it up here because I think the Delft looks so good on this William and Mary piece uh, and it's added with those Delft vases, the, that kind of garniture I have back there that I, I, I just love it. I, I honestly, I sit in my bed all the time now looking at this stuff. This is the one place where I hang stockings. I, I, I feel like stockings are more casual. I, I, I don't like to see them in a living room. I may be different about that, but I like to put them in a bedroom and I, I can't remember the name of the place where I got these, but she sells antique rugs and then from like the fragments uh, or from the damaged ones, she makes these stockings. I just, I just love them because I love the texture and the look of it. So I add those here. Sometimes I put greenery in them, but I, I haven't done that. And then up here, it's again, just a, a continuation of the natural greenery elements I use, the holly, pine, boxwood, and magnolia. It's, it's, that took two seconds to pull together. Yeah, normally I will do a kind of a floral arrangement on this center table here in the bedroom. Um, friends of mine, Adam and Andy, own a great store, uh, both here in Old Town and Georgetown called Mance. And they were selling these giant 
pottery pineapples and I just fell in love with them. I love the color of it. I love the texture of it. And so I bought this and used it as a centerpiece of my table here. And it, I think it's so pretty that I didn't even want to change it out for Christmas. So, and to me, a pineapple always represents Christmas anyway. So I, I feel like it's the perfect little accent for it. So to show the bathroom, um, you know, just to give you a little indication, I have a, a wreath that I hang on the window in the bathroom too. It, it's a, a kind of a gilded metal wreath that I think works really well in that bathroom. As you remember, I showed you last year of how I had just redone that bathroom. I paneled it and anyway, it's, it's such a small bathroom though. You'll probably need to go in there yourself to see it, but it's, um, it's a little pretty touch of Christmas, I think. It's an easy way to decorate a bathroom. As I was saying, this year I've added colored lights to the tree. What I did is I did a base layer of the white lights, just like I do downstairs, wrapping those around each branch. And then with the colored lights, I just kind of overlaid that in a, in a more loosey-goosey fashion. So it's probably about 60 to 40 ratio of white lights to colored lights. And then the other aspect of these colored lights is I found ones that are only three colors, blue, red, and green. I felt like that was more simple and would make, I don't know. I mean, not that, again, I do like colored lights, but I felt like if it was five colors, it would be too much and it would be, it would overwhelm my senses. So I did the three colors and I'm really happy with it. I, I think I will always do a colored, tree in this bedroom now. I think it's a really nice change of pace from the, the white grander tree downstairs. So now let me take you up to the third floor where I have my guest bedrooms. I, I decorate these rooms every year for Christmas too. I, I like to have guests at Christmas and, and folks will like to come see and see the stay with me and see the Christmas decorations. My family is coming again, not at Christmas time, but they're coming up for my Christmas party. So I have the rooms already decorated for them. I will carry this garland all the way up to the third floor. The only difference is I don't put ribbon on it going up here. I just like to see the green. Um, and it, as I say, it's, it's so easy to put this garland on. It takes 30 minutes tops. I love having you guys come two years in a row because then you can really kind of see how I change things every year. I like to mix stuff up all the time. So these portraits right here used to hang in the hallway by the front door. They were unframed and it always kind of drove me crazy they were unframed. I kept trying to look for antique frames to do them. I never found ones that were the right size. So I ended up buying another pair of portraits that are really framed and I love those and moved these up to the guest bedroom. People say all the time not to hang portraits in bedrooms, but I think I have portraits hanging in every bedroom. I, I love it. I don't know why people don't want to stare at, have people staring at them when they sleep, but I like it. So I think y'all should too. Um, and then I do the same thing here. I put wreaths on the windows. It's just an easy way to decorate. And then I have a little bit more fun Christmassy elements. I think you can go a little bit more what I call kid friendly um, there with the Santa Clauses and stuff. Cause you don't really see those typical Christmas stuff through the rest of the house, but I'll do it here in the guest bedrooms. This is the room I affectionately call the bird room. Um, and the same thing, I will have Reese added to this. I, I, I bought some new bird prints to carry on with the theme, which allowed me to hang those here and then move this bird silk painting uh, above the bed, which I love. And then I added a table to this room, but um, I, there's still, if y'all come back next year, I will have other changes made to this room, including I'm going to re-wallpaper this whole room, which is something I feel like I say every time now, but I really do want to re-wallpaper this room. But keeping with the bird theme, I can't change the bird theme, but I want to go with bird and thistle wallpaper. I love that wallpaper.
Welcome to the dining and kitchen. So first thing you will notice in here is the ceiling height. So if you're over six foot, <laughs> you have to duck because Watch your head. from floor to the bottom of the beam is six foot and then up to the subfloor is six, eight. Yes. So we have this room as the dining room, but it hasn't always been the dining room. We found pictures of the home previously where two different owners of the home actually had this being their living room. But for us, it just works so much better for the way our life and our family functions, having a dining room right off the kitchen. Okay. So I know nothing about these beautiful tiles. We'll turn to the experts for that. But I do know the brick in our fireplace is a piece of Cape Cod history. It's actually West Barnstable brick. And before there was a mandated size of brick in the US, these were being made and sold all over Cape Cod. And once the size of brick was standardized, this company went automatically out of business because their bricks were much smaller than the standard size. So we do have this little piece of history of Cape Cod right here in our fireplace. And then once again with Christmas, we each space we do for Christmas, sometimes we do it a little bit more elegant, sometimes yeah. we do it a little bit more kitschy. We just went classic red and green. Now this house, because we're not here full time, we do do it a little bit more minimal. Our home in Connecticut we have our Christmas tree that the kids have and all the fun little ornaments, but here we do it a little bit more yeah. designed. Yep, and so this is beautiful pine garland from the local nursery. And then these are actually winter berries just from our, our bush in the backyard. Yeah. So this dining table, we play lots of games. We eat, Seven is, Stephanie is an amazing cook. So it fits six. But really, we can really squeeze about eight to nine people around Exactly. This and then it does also extend. So this is definitely more of like a breakfast table. I'll say during spring, summer, and fall, we are always eating outside yeah. and enjoying things out there. And on that table, we can see 10 to 12. We love a bamboo moment. And so that's why we selected these. These chairs are indoor and outdoor, and so we love the utility of them. And then we have really cozy chairs that everyone covets at the end, and these are just really cozy little chairs from Restoration Hardware. Yeah, and then if you know us, you know that anywhere we go in the world, we are going to be antique shopping. Absolutely. And if we have to ship it, we will. So this lamp is actually, because we're from Utah, we actually found this at an antique shop. And we, we found it probably eight years ago and we never used it at our home in Utah. It just never felt right. But we are all about finding things that you love and that light you up, even if you might not have a space for them right then. So this actually sat in storage for a while, but then once we bought our Cape Cod We knew home, it was perfect for here. Yeah, we shipped it out here. And then once again with the nautical theme, we love um, nautical art that comes from Cape Cod. Coming into the kitchen, this is by far my favorite part of the house. Absolutely. So many memories are made here. This is where breakfasts are made, Christmas cookies are rolled. We make ornaments in here, do crafts. Every It's true. Like The kitchen really is the heart of the home. So um, when we bought the house, we the only thing that we did keep in here when we started renovating is these cabinets. They were here from... They're probably 30, 40 years old, but we redid everything else. A really special find for us is this table. So we actually found it on Facebook Marketplace again <laughs> um, at an old farm in Connecticut. So we drove out there, but the top was just really it was slippery. Decimated. Yeah, we had to redo the top. So it was a really fun project for us to kind of redo this. My son at the time, um, he was probably what, two? two. Very um, into power tools. Very into power tools. So he did a lot of the sanding on it. Yeah. And yeah, I just think it's a really beautiful piece that really complements mm -hmm. the kitchen. Yeah. We love, one of our favorite things that we did is changing out all of the hardware in the kitchen. We love these antique brass poles that we did. We just did them everywhere along with painting the cabinetry. And my two favorite things in this kitchen, the absolute first is this waterstone faucet. This was a splurge for us as far as design. We went with it in the unlacquered so that it would patina naturally on its own. And it is- It's a full statement. It is probably the most asked about piece in this entire home. And, and we love it and so much. Something so it's really important for Steph and I is we definitely do high and low. So Absolutely. obviously you see we find a lot of really great 
things on Facebook Marketplace, but if we also find something that is higher end, we're willing to splurge on it if we absolutely, absolutely love it. And actually, we saw this faucet years ago on the 73 Questions with Vogue with Taylor Swift. And yes, when we saw we it, we knew it was for us. We knew it was for us. So this is, our, I guess, a little piece of Swift, Swifty history, <laughs> according to the Watts. For all you Swifties Watts. out there. And then my second favorite thing in the kitchen is this beautiful tile. It's clay tile, and it's Moroccan. It's all hand glazed. And because we chose this because we wanted something that felt handmade, imperfect, again, with unfussy. And we wanted something that had a high amount of variation because to us, when I look at a seashell and I'm interpreting all the colors that are hitting my eyes, I wanted that same effect in this backsplash. Once again, another ode to maritime and coastal living. Yeah, and then these lights are from Deval from England. We love them, they're handcrafted. Um, this was one of- Italian range. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's a space that we can spend a lot of time in. And to this day, we did this about three and a half years ago. Yep. We come in here every time we're here. We just, and we just think, oh, we love this kitchen so much. Love it. The open shelving is also a fun, a fun thing. So we did the, the unlacquered brass, but these boards are actually old floorboards we found at an old salvage yard. So that's why they're a little bended they're a little and everything. They're a little imperfect. A little imperfect. We, we didn't want any upper cabinets in here because obviously with it being six feet, we couldn't have something <laughs> too, you know, heavy in here. So we decided yeah, to go with the open condensed. shelving. Signature dishes. So after the Thanksgiving smorgasbord, which I craft and enjoy doing, then we head into our Christmas things. So we are making everything from our traditional pies, Nantucket pie, apple pie. Those are actually the only pies I've made. Okay. <laughs> those are the only pies, but I love them and I feel like I have mastered them. And she's them. really great at both those so two So I've pies. done those two. And then there is nothing better to me than a Christmas dinner with a chowder, whether it be an oyster chowder, a clam chowder, or a corn chowder, as well as turkey and mashed potatoes so stephanie, really i'm a one trick pony stephanie is the kind of i make cook, a, i make a damn good turkey yeah stephanie is the kind of cook where we when i look in the fridge and the cupboard we have absolutely nothing and then steph will come down and make a five course meal out of nothing it's true it's and impressive. My, my kids only eat buttered noodles so really it's just <laughs> cooking for chase and i yeah Speaking of the holidays and something that I cannot cook is I have never fully mastered the art of a Christmas cookie dough that I can use with an actual cookie press. So I figured what I would end up doing is if I couldn't get these in gorgeous cookies, why not make them into an ornament that I could enjoy all year round? And it's so easy. It's something that I do. I do it with my kids. And really all you need is a cookie stencil, paper clay, and some ornament hooks. All right, let's go into the kitchen where we sometimes cook, but it's mainly a bar where we mix drinks. All right, welcome to the kitchen um, slash bar. This is actually where we mix our drinks. And when we have people over, this is where everyone comes over at first. So we're actually hosting our annual holiday party this weekend. And we usually during the summer, or the, um, other times of the year, we do a Paloma. This year, we thought we were gonna make a different cocktail that felt a little bit wintry. Um, so we are doing a tequila um, cosmopolitan. So I was gonna mix one for y'all. It's a super easy drink that we just came up with. Um, so it's two parts tequila, which Casa Dorgonas is our favorite in this household. Um, tequila. One part uh, Cointreau. And cranberry juice. So very simple ingredients. And then I'll do a little splash of lime juice that I'd already squeezed just to be prepared and not be doing it as guests are waiting. Do a good shake. And 
such a pretty color. I just love a good um, color that goes with your decor. So, and then I'll do a little rosemary and some little seeds in there. So, super easy drink. And that's kind of a little holiday and we're just ready to serve it to our guests. So that's gonna be what we'll be doing in the kitchen this weekend. I just love dressing up a drink. Like I feel like it always needs to have like a little bit of a ornament. So the little pomegranate and the little rosemary, I think kind of makes it a little bit more special. I mean, I think that tip number one for hosting a party when it's a big group is just making sure that everyone feels very comfortable. So make sure that they feel fine opening your fridge or you have an open bar where people can mix their own drinks. Um, Make sure you also ask for help. I mean, all your friends that are come over that, you know, that you trust, make sure that they know where things are and that they can help you out with things. Um, I also think that just to be prepared and have enough liquor and drinks and food is super important. I hate thinking that there's gonna be a guest that comes that there's not a drink for or like a bite that they can have. So just plan in advance. I think that's super important. Um, Another part that I love doing with Christmas parties or parties in general is having kind of like a surprise element. So every year we do something a little different. Last year we had mariachis show up kind of in the middle of the party. Uh, this year we have a entertainer singer that's going to be doing Christmas carols in the backyard. So I think that's kind of fun for people to kind of tell the story about, you know, and feel special when they come to your house. Big thing that I always tell my clients that we help decorate or when I decorate um, my house, I think that the kitchen is such a space that you spend so much time in during the holidays. Why forget it? And I think it's important also to think about elements that don't take over your workspace, that it's actually kind of going up or going around your built-ins, uh, your um, stove, just so you don't feel like it's all cramped in, but make it feel special too. During the holidays, you're gonna spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So I think it's important to add it to your holiday decor room. And bringing kind of like the same theme with orange and everything, I decided to do some more of my leftover oranges for the kitchen. Again, every room needs to have a little creature, so why not a sea creature in the kitchen? This is a lobster, uh, brass lobster that I found in Paris last year at one of the flea markets. Um, she's one of my favorite pieces in the house. Holiday decor has been, and Christmas time, it's my favorite time of the year. I remember spending it at both of my grandmother's houses, asking them if we can set their trees, put their garland out. Uh, of course, I was the first one at my house, growing up, putting the tree up, wanting to go by the tree and finding the perfect one. Um, it was definitely something that I enjoyed doing as early as beginning of November, just to get everything set up and enjoy it for as long as we could. Uh, clearly, I do it here too, and at my house, I guess I go a little overboard. Um, just because I love having every single room have a little bit of a mood. So, it's so fun. Now let's head into the bedroom area. Let me show you a couple of things. Welcome to the primary. Um, as you can tell, I have a background with Ralph Lauren. I used to work there for a couple of years. And so that influence still comes into this house big time. Um, in the bedroom, I kind of wanted to still make it feel very cozy. It's still holiday. So a very easy way to do it is just changing your bedding. I think just adding a little bit of a plaid with your normal bedding. I mean, this white sheets with the black uh, blanket is what we have year round, but adding a little bit of red with the plaid is always so much fun. And, you know, it's kind of nice to change it a couple times a year just to make it feel a little bit more special. Um, also the bedroom, I think it's kind of like a place like it's fun and cozy during the winter. So adding a couple of rates to the windows, with the easy ribbon hanging from your um, rods. It's such an easy little add-on that makes the room feel so special. I think a bedroom is so important to keep clean, actually. I love having it like picked up all the time because it's kind of like my relaxing space. And so whenever you come into your room, you shouldn't feel like stressed that you need to be cleaning up or picking up things. So most of the time, a little bit of my mess is in the closet. But the bedroom, I try to keep up as clean as I can and make the bed every day. Um, I love having a lot of pillows on the bed and adding a lot of layers and patterns to all the um, accent pillows. Um, I'm a very easy bed maker. I just like folding my duvet in three at the bottom, the blanket and sheets, and then a ton of throw pillows on there. One of my favorite places to sit at is actually in the bedroom. So I love having some comfortable chairs in here. Uh, these ones I found at Scout this year actually, and the color was already perfect. Um, 
this is a place that I love coming and putting my shoes on, having a seat at the end of the day and watching a little TV. Um, and then I have my little third eye to keep the evil eye out of this uh, house. So I got it in Greece a couple years ago and it kind of just, it's a fun little piece to keep in the bedroom. Another piece that I love in this room is this little camel stool. Um, I found it at Round Top a couple years ago and I just thought it was kind of like the funniest little thing. And it's actually very comfortable to put your feet up. Um, it's funny because it actually, if you lift a little cushion, it kind of folds up, which is kind of really fun. I don't know if someone was traveling with it or where it came from, but I just love the little, again, creature that it turns into. So another element that I love doing in any room is using the ceiling as the fifth wall. Um, in this room, I decided to add this plaid that has a little bit of a dark gray black pattern on it. Um, it just creates that extra layer of Kind of luxury and coziness in any room. Um, I love painting the ceiling. I love adding wallpaper to the ceiling, adding medallions. It's kind of like that extra special moment that, you know, if it's just white, it kind of just disappears, but there's so much more that you can do with it to create another design element. Just like in any other room in the house, I like adding a little bit of a garland and some Christmas lights. So in here, the mirror that I finished, like my last like tie by tie or little, details i like having a little bit of that light glowing in the morning and also at night just finishing the day while i'm watching tv it's kind of fun to just have it on and feel the holiday spirit in here um also i like changing the pillows that's such an easy way to like create a little bit of decor just with the bedding just adding a little bit of an accent in your bench in your bedroom or like a little blanket um just to throw it it's so easy to just add a little bit of a holiday motif in each little corner we have one more tree in the inside of the house, uh, and this is actually the most special tree to me. Um, it's the one that has all my special ornaments, and it is actually in the closet. So if you wanna follow me. Welcome again to the closet, um, and this is my favorite tree. Um, I think your closet is like your most personal and intimate space. This is where you keep your favorite things, and. Um, you know, where you get ready and start your day. And so this tree is actually the one that has all the ornaments that have a little bit of a meaning or have a little bit of a story behind them. Um, clearly it's the most packed tree in the house and it's the one that takes the longest because I love kind of opening each ornament and, you know, thinking where it came from and the story about it. Um, so my favorite ornaments are these uh, needlepoint ornaments that my friend Kathy makes for me every single year. And she's so thoughtful, whatever's happening in my life that year, she'll do an ornament that has a story with it. Um, so the year that I did Kips Bay, she um, needle pointed the Kips Bay logo into an ornament. Of course she did the slippers. There's a tag, like a traveling tag. Every single year there's something different that she makes for me, which is super special. The other favorite part of this tree is um, I didn't put a star in this tree. I actually did a top hat. It is my great grandfather's hat when he got married. Um, my grandmother gave it to me and it's one of the most special things in the house. And so I love it that it kind of goes in theme with the closet and the lights that are in this room. So just to keep it a little interesting and fun and you know, have a purpose for that hat to find a little home during the holidays. There are a lot of shoes in this closet. That is the one thing that's like my weak point. Um, I have a little bit of an obsession with stubs and woodens, of course. Um, and then also sabas, based here in Dallas. Um, I'm all about a slipper and an easy shoe that has a little bit of a statement. Um, I love wearing something kind of fun that creates a little bit of a conversation. Um, and I think it's kind of like a thing that now people talk about, that they're like, well, how many shoes do you have or what shoe are you going to wear today? So it's kind of a fun element to wear and it's kind of like a fun conversation starter. I think people like talking about what shoe am I going to wear? <laughs> there are a couple that could be Christmassy. I think the green velvet with the martini is definitely a holiday shoe. Um, and then there is the, um, well, this calamandra kind of is a little holiday-ish. Um, I think those are kind of like the most holiday ones. I thought there was one more. Oh, there's a black martini. 
And then there's the crest with the little green and red. Usually when I wear it, it actually comes out like the day of or like 10 minutes before. I, that is not something that I plan. I plan the decor, the food, the drinks, but what I'm gonna wear is just kinda like a last minute thing. You know what, sometimes I regret that I don't do it with enough time, but that is something that I, I hope I don't have one more level of stress. I try to not. A new element that I added in the last year to the house is I added this wallpaper to the ceiling. Um, it's from House of Hackney, and it kind of looks like a Persian rug. Um, I love how cozy it turns this room into. It kind of even makes it feel like a little bit of a, you're wrapped in a little gift or present. Um, and I love how warm it gets it. And a little detail that I want you all to look is my friend Ashley, who does all of my murals, she um, paints over your fire alarms or your air vents. So I play this game with my niece and nephew, like to look up and see if you can find their alarm box. Um, it's actually complete camouflage when you look up at it. So it's one of my favorite patterns. All right, let me show you a couple of things in the den, which is actually the second bedroom of the house. Um, I decided to not have a TV in the living room. And so I turned the second bedroom into my den slash kind of like cozy watch TV room. Um, this is one of my, the rooms that I spend the most time in. Um, it's super dark and cozy and it kind of super easy to just lay down on the couch and watch a movie for hours. So again, this is another pattern in the ceiling, fifth wall. Uh, we went with a blue theme in this room. And then for the holiday decor, I decided to do a black watch pattern. So all the ribbon in the tree, the ribbon in the um, wreath and the pillows in this room are all black watch. Again, very influenced by a Ralph Lauren preppy look. So um, in this room, I love, um, it's very personal and I love the art. Um, this is a painting that my grandmother did of herself. So it's her self portrait. And she was an artist and she painted her um, father, who is my great grandfather, whose hat is on the tree. So it's one of the paintings that means the most to me. And um, I barely got to meet him. I was very young when he passed, but everyone in the family says that that's who I remind them the most. So I love that connection to him. All right, let me show you something real cool. Um, this is a TV room, but I also don't want it to look like it's a TV room. So I have the Samsung frame and I got this easel made um, just for it to look like it's standing on like a wood easel and not just the legs or hanging on the wall. I just wanted to make sure it looked like it was a piece of art. Before we head out, I'm gonna show you the bathroom. Uh, this is a project that I did a couple years ago where we remodeled and recreated the space, creating a wet area and then using these vintage antique chests, turning them into the um, vanities. Um, this is a mural done by Ashley Braithwaite. She was in here for about three weeks painting the walls and she came up with this theme of uh, English garden. Um, I love the colors that she used. Uh, it's all about that green, beautiful color with a little bit of a gray that brings in some of the subway idea, you know, old school. Um, I love adding eucalyptus in the shower. Either it's hanging from your shower head or having it in a, um, a base. It just makes it feel like it's a little spa and it smells amazing in here when the steam is going. Um, this is one of my favorite spaces that we've created in this house because it kind of completely reworked what the old bathroom, the single bathroom that was in the house for the primary kind of created a space that's a little bit more functional. Wet area, it's kind of really nice and functional. I love that this shelf kind of holds some of the things that I use daily. Um, and I love having the candle lit in here um, and just holding a little plant and it, turns into a little moment to make it feel a little more special in here. Um, it's all about those layers, including in the shower. Welcome to the pool house. So this is where uh, we host our um, parties in the summer, but also in the winter, we've turned it into another little, little Christmas moment. Um, again, this tree is kind of like going with the room, just like I like doing in the room inside that so go with all the colors. Um, this blue room kind of inspired me to do a blue themed tree with all the ginger jars and all the 
blue motifs with, again, that blue ribbon. Um, one of my favorite things about this tree is actually the base. I love how this planter kind of helps not having a table skirt and not see the base of um, the tree. So this tree is kind of like more in the blue tones, kind of just going with the new color in this room. Um, this used to be my office and it was all white. We needed to be able to see everything, picking fabrics and wallpapers and everything. So now that it's back to a pool house, I decided to go with this darker, moodier, moodier room. And that's how this tree came along. Um, all this blue and white with the ginger jars, with the Chinoiserie um, motif was kind of like inspired by the color of the room, kind of like the same way that the other rooms work um, with the blue uh, ribbon, with the um, TV room or the more warmer colors with the fruit in the living room. This is kind of like how I decide to decorate each tree, just so it feels like it's part of the decoration and it's not just like an addition for the season. So um, that's kind of like my, the best advice that I can give my clients is like, make it feel like it belongs in the room and it's not just an addition for a couple of weeks. All right, and over here I have this dollhouse that I've been working on. It is a gift that I'm working on for my niece, Vivi. I found this amazing antique shop in Mexico that has a great collection of antique miniature furniture. Uh, and so I bought a couple of things last time I was there um, and just starting to get the collection going for her. One of my favorite things to do during the holidays and during our party is serving uh, raisin canes. We go and order 200 chicken fingers and we just keep them warm throughout the night as people come in and out during the party. Um, and we tried serving them in kind of like our nicest silver and our uh, hot plates and some of our um, nicer dinnerware just to make it feel like it's a nice holiday meal uh, but it's the simplest and everyone loves a good chicken finger um, it's a tradition so usually our um, invitation says canes and cocktails come from six to ten uh, we just love having that tradition and everyone knowing what they're expecting to eat that night and then i don't have to cook i don't have to cook anything i just go pick it up uh, we do have a dessert table set with some of my favorite holiday treats and um we fill it up with everything from cookies to gingerbread to everything that you can imagine. A lot of sugar just to make the calories count during the season. Now let's go see the final tree. Uh, this is the real tree in the house, so let's go. So this is our outdoor area. Uh, we built this a couple of years ago and it's kind of like the most used space in the house. Uh, we love hanging out here during the summer with the pool and during the winter with the fireplace. And so this is where we do our uh, natural tree. Uh, we go and pick it up the day after Thanksgiving and we trim it. And this is where we add color lights, no ornaments. So it's all about that fun, vintage light bulb look in, out here. And we still get to enjoy a natural tree without having the mess inside of the house. So kind of like the best of both worlds. Since we're so lucky to be in Texas, we'll usually get pretty nice weather beginning of December. So this is kind of like the area that we like hanging out and this is kind of like where people congregate during the party. Um, this year we'll be having live music. We're having a stage built in the patio um, and there'll be carolers in the front. So very excited to host all my, our friends and family and have a great time this weekend. So here we are in my dining room. Um, about 10 years ago, we took down the wall that separated the dining room to the kitchen. We wanted a bigger space and to be more engaged um, with the kids uh, while they were doing homework or uh, family meals. And so it's a formal-ish dining room that spills right into the kitchen. Dining room table is all set for Christmas Eve dinner and we have our Santa plates and I have my monogram Christmas napkins. I have um, this silverware that was actually my great grandfather's. When I was, um, when I told my mom that we were engaged, she said, oh, I was really hoping because I have a gift for you. And she gave me this silver because his last name was Beringer, and it was already monogrammed with a B. 
And so she had been holding on to it for all this time, hoping one of us would soon have the last name that would make sense with the silver. So um, we usually have Christmas crackers and these little treats. And so it's sort of Christmas never ends, or actually it does begin here. And in the morning, we'll open presents to each other. This table is um, not too formal. We don't use a uh, tablecloth. These are just placemats that I had bought years ago in Thailand. The um, centerpiece is just leftover greens that I had used for the mantle with some pomegranates and acorns, um, some holiday candles, and we bought out the good crystal for wine and water. So for Christmas dinner, my husband always makes a crown roast, I think just because he loves the presentation of how it looks with all of the chops in a circle. And we pair it with mac and cheese because Uncle Chris makes the best homemade mac and cheese and it's just become sort of a family tradition. It's um, sort of fancy meets homey and we do it every year. So this is a great urban electric chandelier. Um, it's mirrored and at night it just reflects all of what's happening underneath it. It's like your table of six became a party of 12 and makes it a little bit more festive. I found this great armoire with the chicken wire fronts at a um, secondhand shop and we keep crystal and china and things that you get for your wedding that you never really use in here. Um, some old photographs from the family and lots of little elephants um, that I've collected over the years have made their way here. I have this one pair that I love that are silver from Thailand and um, they actually open up so you can put some sort of treat in there or a hideaway. I'm obsessed with elephants because of my travels. When we first went to Thailand, I was um, so surprised that you could actually walk up to one and pet one. And did you know that they're kind of hairy, but they're so cute? Um, even on the dining room table, we have our knife rests are these little silver elephants. So this is our dry bar, and to keep things sort of casual and fun, we have a kegerator um, next to uh, my mother's old punch bowl. So again, a little fancy and a little bit homey. So we're ready for anything. As you can see, I go all out for the holidays. Um, my family home was filled with a lot of tradition and collections. And after my parents passed away, I was able to take on all of my mom's collections. So I've got a great Santa collection. I have a Nutcracker collection. I have things that I've picked up along the way. Our tree is filled with lots of old and new. We have great little bamboo um, ornaments that we got in Hong Kong. Um, we have things that we bought when our kids were little or things that they made. And then some new fresh things that um, you know, that you get exposed to and you need to add them to your tree. Every year um, we go bowling with our in-laws. It's always a fun way to do, um, to get together or with my sister and her five kids. Um, so it's not all about being in the house. The kids like to go ice skating. We usually try to do the tree all together, although now I have two in college. So um, it was, it's, it's hard when they, they aren't here and you have to do the traditions without them. So moving out of the dining room and into the kitchen, even though it's all one room, um, this is really the heart of the house. Um, we all like to cook, and this is a great space where we can all be together. Somebody can be at the island or at the dining room table while we're cooking and cleaning. And so it's a nice integration into the rest of the house without it feeling like um, the kitchen is sort of an afterthought. So I'm the everyday cook and I have, you know, 
all of the favorites. My husband loves to cook though, but it becomes like a big production and um, nobody really wants to be in the kitchen when he's cooking because he gets so intense about it. Um, but he is an amazing cook. And so he does, he decides to cook on the big occasions like Christmas and Thanksgiving um, and sometimes, you know, Super Bowl. But um, for me, I, I like to cook the basics. So the island with this um, center sink, I like everything to be a little bit symmetrical. So we've got some preserved boxwoods. This year I'm trying to grow my own paper whites. Um, and then we've got this amaryllis ball that's dipped in wax that I just thought was the coolest thing. And so I'm going to attempt to grow these for the holidays. Um, and we have a wood top, which is unusual. But again, this has been here for over 10 years and it's just patinaed a bit with us. And the bit of wood makes it feel a little bit warmer and it's not another hard surface. Even our lanterns have a little bit of Christmas. We soften them up just by wrapping them with greens. So my husband likes to make pizza and we actually have a pizza oven outside. I found this great vintage pizza peel years ago and when we hung it up, we didn't realize that there was a bird um, sort of burned into it, which is so cool. It became a piece of art. As a designer, I'm always looking for another space to style. Um, this is one of our bar carts in our kitchen. We actually have two. This is a great space to have the bar set up, but also cookies and some water. It's right next to the dining room, so it serves as a mini buffet when we need it. When we first moved into the house, we didn't have a mudroom, um, and this window used to be the exterior of the house. So we loved that you could still see down and into the backyard, so we left it. Here is another bar cart that we keep in our kitchen. This one's always set. Um, this is vintage, and we have a vintage stool that we pull up when we have company. Decorating your own house is paralyzing. No matter how many resources you have in front of you, I think the more you have, the harder it is. So, um, for my clients, I'm so objective and it goes back to sort of my sensible math background where I see it like a geometry equation. When I walk into a client's house, I know what's supposed to go where, how it's going to fit. There's always some sort of jumping off point. When it's your own house, it feels like such a commitment and I really can appreciate that my clients have a hard time with it because I have a hard time in my own house. What do I love most about my home is um, just the sense of comfort. You come in here and you really feel like you can be yourself, you can relax, you can futz around, you can, it's, it's our whole history. When my kids aren't here, they're all big now. So I've got two in high school and two in college. And this whole house is our life. And so you're constantly reminded of that, all of the good times and the big things and the little things and hanging out in the living room, watching movies or football or cooking in the kitchen. Um, this is just us in a nutshell. So here we are in the mudroom. Again, we, this was an addition that we put on because we have four kids, a lot of in and out of the house. And so the only way to do it with the access to the basement downstairs was to have this pitched roof um, and this set of stair, uh, the set of stairs. Every kid gets a cubby and above the cubby is my mother's Santa collection. I love pulling this out every year. Um, it's sort of like they need to know when they come in the door whether they're going to be naughty or nice. And so this is just sort of a reminder that Christmas is around the corner. My favorite Santa is the guy here with the ski poles. Um, whether he's going for a ski or a hike, that's one of my favorite pastimes. The family rules, I mean, this is just a funny little sign that I think I got at Home Goods. It really says what the rules are. 
Always tell the truth. Work hard. Keep your promises. Try new things. Don't whine. Laugh out loud. Always say, I love you. Use kind words. Do your best. Be grateful. Be kind. Be proud of yourself. Say please and thank you. I mean, it, it doesn't matter where it comes from. It's kind of good words of advice. So while my kids have cubbies, my husband and I are a lot messier than they are, and we needed a place to hide away our things, so we put these built-ins in, and then I had a local artist um, paint the fronts of them so that they'd be more interesting, and they gave me this um, chinoiserie motif on the front, fits in with the rest of the stuff in our house. Welcome to my kitchen. This was the original kitchen in the home, but we have drastically changed it. The wall and entrance that I just came through was once a solid wall, and this island didn't exist because there wasn't enough space. So we opened up the kitchen to the hallway to capture those extra feet and really make this kitchen feel larger than it is. Um, keeping things kind of classic and simple with a traditional twist because we wanted to keep the vein of the house. We've got white cabinetry and beautiful marble countertops. The marble was essential, so I am not a cook. However, one of my holiday traditions is to make cinnamon rolls um, that I do every year. And then I have this special um, icing and I actually was testing out a new um, flavor for it uh, for this year. And I bake them every year the weekend before Christmas and deliver them to friends on Christmas Eve so that they have them Christmas morning. Um, it's one of my family's favorites and one of our friends as well. The secret is in the icing um, that holds both maple and coffee in them. Um, and it's just kind of like holiday goodness all wrapped into one. I did have a year when the yeast went flat and the Cinnamon rolls after hours of preparing the dough um, just never rose. And therefore, I had to throw away the whole thing. Lesson learned, do it a little bit ahead of time and test it out first before you make dozens and dozens of them. When um, we were renovating, it was important for this to be an eat-in uh, for casual small uh, meals like breakfast. So we have an eating area that I'm going to show you next. Um, and that is right here. Um, I love the bay window. It gets the best natural light in the whole house. And because it's small and petite, we have used um, lucite chairs mixed with this uh, vintage walnut table that I purchased when I was dating my husband. And it was like my first antique. I've been so proud of it. And I've carried it from house to house in our journey together. Um, and here, some kind of an inexpensive art trick uh, we found these oyster shells in our front yard when we moved in and I cleaned them up and framed them in uh, ready-made box frames and they are still a favorite today. So your art doesn't always have to be nice and it doesn't always have to be expensive. It can be homemade. To anchor this space, uh, I have a jute rug, fairly inexpensive, so I don't worry about it. It has been here for years. It's been well loved and when it's um, gone, I can toss it uh, kind of guilt-free with it being a um, sustainable material, um, but it helps add softness and um, keeps this space defined in a room that uh, is multifunction. In our kitchen, we would not be um, doing ourselves justice if we did not have a coffee bar, since caffeine is what makes this world go round. Um, this is where our, we have coffee in the morning and a nice coffee in the afternoon. It also turns into a casual bar when we're not entertaining and it's just um, my family here. Um, so it houses wine and treasures and snacks for the children, but I can't say enough about it. I love it. Um, and then small kind of party trick is to use mirrored um, in your mirrors in your cabinetry uh, when you have things back there that aren't so sightly um, it reflects light and gives off the look of glass without um, revealing its secrets behind the doors 
But now I'm gonna take you into the dining room where you can see that we've got it set up for dinner this evening um, in our Nutcracker theme, of course. And um, I'll show you a little bit in here and a few of my prized treasures in our dining room. When I went to school, I originally went to UVA to become a doctor. And I was, I remember being in chemistry lab and uh, just sitting there going, man, this is just not what I wanna do. And I have always been in art. I painted murals in um, elementary schools in the Richmond area as a child. And um, I love to draw and paint. So I fell back on my artistic route as I was exploring what I would major in. And I have to credit my dad and my mom who encouraged me to look at interior design um, as a form of art that um, they thought I might enjoy because I was doing 3D art at the time and installations um, in my art program at UVA and they thought that would be a natural transition. I love decorating my own home, especially when time allows for it. I just think the reward is worth the work. Um, I can tell you my children just light up when they see the lights and the decorations, they get so excited about Santa. Um, and, and there's just no better feeling than that, you know, your children's response to it. So this is our dining room. Um, when designing this home, these openings did not exist. There was one small opening right smack in the center. So these um, doors into the room now line up with the windows on the other side so that when you're in the kitchen looking through, you can look straight outside, um, which allows for the dining area to stay intimate and cozy in the center and then for the uh, surrounding paths to feel light and airy and more spacious. The other thing I did is this home did have a chair railing and wallpaper, um, and I took it all out to simplify the space, put in these um, columns and half columns because I had already purchased these pair of windows that came off an old building in France and repurposed them into mirrors for this room, I had been saving them for many years in my old house, waiting for an opportunity to use them together. And this provided that opportunity. Um, beyond uh, the windows, I do wanna highlight this fun spice rack that I found. It's a French country spice rack. Um, and while it doesn't hold spices, it does get repurposed um, for cards. Um, after dinner, we pull them out and play a game of hearts many times in this family um, and other games that my children uh, know and love. So this year with the theme being more feminine and light and a little bit um, more formal, I wanted to contrast that formality by not using a tablecloth and just using Chili Witch placemats for durability, but it still needed to feel rich and layered. And so I have pulled out one of my sets, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your outlook, I have many sets because I am an avid collector, um, but I have pulled out an old set here um, that is a little bit of a throwback along with some of these ornaments that I had also hung on the garland um, in the characters of From the Nutcracker that I've laid out on the table. I always use the fresh greenery. You can't go wrong with the smell that it um, gives off. This year, because the theme is the ballet nutcracker and not nutcrackers themselves, we're pulling um, these swans in from the magical scene where Claire is riding with her prince uh, through uh, the misty, um, river there on the swan carriage and so that is why we have the swans featured on the table and we have layered the pink ribbons and the glass balls that I mentioned um, that are kind of peppered throughout our formal entertaining space with um, various glassware we've got uh, some uh, pink crystal glassware for the white wine and these beautiful handmade Portuguese um, glass tumblers um, and all of those layers go into, um, I think, the success of setting a table, including using um, a silver set that's uh, been in my family for years. 
So these tumblers could be used for water. Um, they are also used in this house around the holidays for milk punch, which is a New Orleans tradition and a Hillary family tradition. Um, and it's one of our favorite classics. We start making it around Thanksgiving and we kind of keep it on hand throughout the season. Um, it is milk and bourbon infused. My husband um, will many times make his own simple syrup with vanilla bean infused flavoring um, with nutmeg. It's an absolute delicious treat. And um, if you haven't had it, I highly encourage you to try it. For our guests tonight, we always serve gumbo, which as a non-New Orleanian, I pride myself on the fact that I know how to make this, not only because I'm not from New Orleans, but also because I am not a good cook. Um, so we do smoked turkey and andouille gumbo, um, and that is always served to start off the meal with our guests, um, along with a smoked filet, and usually a green salad. So we'll have some green beans. Um, it's kind of our tradition, and I think our friends look forward to it every year. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.